Mr. Forbes, good to see you again. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm, 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 I'm good as hell. Yeah, yeah, all good here, all good here. So we yeah. ran out of time last time because there's just so much to talk about in this case. Um, and, you know, the, the fact that your book opened out new avenues that had never been discussed before. So on top of everything else that we've had to discuss, the, there's also now the new avenues that, that your book looked into. So for anybody that doesn't know already, Scott's book, A Long Walk to Justice, let's have your book. That's another, yep. You know what some of them had on Sonia Pools, I don't even know that book. <laughs> <Right>. So... <laughs> Scott's book is available on Amazon um, and it takes a completely different look at the case from what's been done before. So that's for anybody that hasn't heard of it yet. But where we left off last time, Scott, one of the first things I wanted to ask you about, I know from experience in this case that there are people out there who will attack anybody that suggests that it wasn't Luke who murdered Jody. So going right back to your early involvement, up until now, what what has been your experience of hate, haters, guilters, people people who think you should not be speaking out? Well, because it started with 50,000, or at least nearly 50,000. Okay, then, so you then, know. Then, then, yes, listen, it's just a minute. Uh, then he, he, Mark came was never offered 50,000 or me or anybody even suggested. It's just nonsense. Okay, so so explain that story to people. The, the, the idea was that... You had you had told Mark to go to the police and say I met, I met to killing Jody. We were going to sell his story to the press for fifty thousand. He was going to get life day twenty years <laughs> and, and we were going to share twenty five thousand. Now Sandra, I must tell you and, and I think you know this. If I got fifty thousand at the start of this case, oh I wouldn't have paid, I wouldn't have paid for my expenses, my pet or my coffee. No. That they've that, that given to this case, right? In, um, the 50,000 was the main one, right? We'll put that to bed. I, I, I didn't care then. I heard I had an affair with Cory Mitchell yourself. Um, I was helping Luke because of my stepson. Um, oh. I spoke to Sam Poulin. Do you remember BBC One? I think it was 2005, The Devil's Own. BBC Scotland, yeah. BBC Scotland. I speak to Sam Poulin. He was nice. He's unless he thinks he's on Luke's side, right? The report him is that bad, and I'm going to say it is that bad. She finished with Scott Forbes as an extensive criminal record who's waited 18 months to come forward. Why should we believe Scott Forbes? Now, I told Sam Poole, the only reservation I had about speaking in that programme was my daughter says to me, Dad, because of your past, and I had a past violence and, and fights and all different stuff, they would use it against me. And I knew that. But I've had, they're all spent convictions. That's how I've become a lawyer and entered into the law society. That's another one that... And then, um, because I put my past behind me and helped, so, so I spoke out. So, man, for pulling in highlights it, ask a question, I waited 18 months. Do you know the next again day in a tabloid newspaper, it says that the program highlighted the fact that Scott Forbes could have been involved in the murder. Now, people are phoning me, Scott. They're saying that you're involved in the murder of Jody Jones. I'm thinking, what? I read the paper. I go on the, 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 the phone call to the editor, and I'm screaming, ah, you've done this, and says this. They removed the article and they put up a, a tiny apology. A tiny apology. Next again, day, same page in a big corner. We apologised to Scott Forbes. We took legal action. You know, and I found out something pretty interesting. If they hadn't apologised, my damages would have been double what I received. Now, if the, the amount that I received is now open. I've got a stalker, Stephanie Hall. We'll come back to it. And, um, <laughs> genuinely a stalker. Genuinely like to family and friends and um, but, well, so I sued the newspaper, and I think it was—I think going back, I think it was nine thousand four hundred pounds or something, something thereabouts, right? And that whole check was paid to a registered charity, which I'm no prepared to divulge. But any time people want to come into court, we'll bring people working, we'll show it. Yeah. And um, the, the registered charity had an interest in Luke Mitchell case. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, and it wasn't an me. Yes, I was yes. not the registered it charity. Not, it's a registered <laughs> charity. It's a, a charity that's maybe worth multi multi million pounds, and and they've got all sorts of businesses, and and, and they've got a, an interest in Luke Mitchell's case. So they, I donated the check. 
yeah. the full check to this registered charity. I barely thought from, from it, by the way, because I was looking at Luke Mitchell's case, and these people were looking at Luke Mitchell's case. So yeah. it, it benefited me and Luke Mitchell for me to put the money into this that charity, and that's where I stopped, right? Yeah. So I got condemned for that. Oh, I got four figures something. Then on holiday, I can't remember the last time I had this holiday summer, right? No. So then, then over the years, um, look, some of your Luke supporters have been the worst. I must tell you, who the fuck does he think he is? He's now coming right in a book, making money. You don't make any money for that. And, uh, where has he been all these years? I've always been here, I'm sure, you know, in, in, in the backgrounds, then things that people, um, that people I, I didn't saw... know nothing about. I saw a thing, um, I can't remember, it might have been Facebook, it might have been YouTube, I can't remember, um, where somebody said, you know, why why is he only coming forward now? Where's he been for all these years? And you just oh. think, the, these are people that, that say that, you know, they've looked at the case and they, they know all the, the new information. Well, if they did, they would have known you were involved from the start. They won. But, they won. Yeah, it's it's just this this idea that, if anybody comes forward and tries to make a stand in cases like this, oh, these people what? automatically look for the negative. They automatically go digging for something negative to try and discredit the people that are actually trying to do good. After Channel 5's murder in a small town. Mm -hmm. oh. And Edinburgh is on Facebook saying, I've just jumped into this and uh, oh, he's just looking for attention. Now, you know, I was well into Channel 5 documentary, there were big parts of me, and they phoned and apologised because my accent was so strong, I had to put subtitles for the cut. Vast amount of yep. me on Channel 5. I was all right with that. I'm not, I'm not all right with that. I'm reading on Facebook. Then when I looked at the criminal a wee bit closer, she had links to Miss Hamilton to the Daily Record. She also had links to police, police involved in the Mitchell case. So we'll just right. leave it. And yeah. then people were bringing me attention to uh, oh, Jane, Jane Hamilton being, and I understand why, because I'm attacking her, she's entitled to attack her. And, um, and I'm a bully and I'm libeling people. And I, I welcome anyone to take me to court. Please, anyone, Jane Hamilton, daily record, anyone, please, please, we'll go into court and I'll take a stand and take an oath. And, and, and I'll question the under oath. They're in for trouble if they ever attempt that. It's, it's interesting. Got, that that you mentioned um ideas that you, that you bully people my light has just gone off and um, stuff saying that like that you're a bully and you bully people and <coughs> the claim once before that you were basically my um guard dog and that I, I sent read you that, on I read people that, I read that, I read that, I read that. for that the record you. listen I'll, I'll go make of that people call me a bully they may Maybe I've been a bully, but I think in some stages in your life I've been a bully and a big, big prick and whatever. When you look Mitchell case, no chance. I'm not taking no. that for anyone. I'm no. not bullied anyone. I've, no. I've got regrets about Mark Kane because I quite like Mark Kane. Now, if the police had spoke to Mark Kane on the 3rd of July 2003, this was yeah. finished. My involvement in this case was finished. Mark Kane yeah. could have been written out, his DNA could have been taken. They would, should have checked his alibi. They'd never have checked his whereabouts or nothing. They'd never checked his scratches on his face, nothing. And me knowing Mark Kane's history, I regret what happened to Mark Kane, but I've no regrets about speaking out about Mark yeah. Kane. Does that make sense? Yeah. None, none. If, if I'm being quite honest, I'm quite proud of myself. You must say, you part in the back. I stood up when everybody in Dow Keith was shouting, beast, beast, he's an animal. Yeah. And can we wait? I don't know, Paul. This is e this is too easy. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, in politics recently, you leak something to the Daily Record. Alex Hammond was talking about you. You leak something to the, da the Daily Record. He's innocent. He's been found innocent. I respect that. You've been smeared because it's all over a paper. Somebody, somebody leaked it. No, somebody within leaked. Somebody mm -hmm. leaked it to Lovian, to Lovian, Lovian Dalkey police to the media. No other suspect. I'm not looking for anybody so they can run massively with Luke Mitchell. Now. Then um, I, I, I get drawn attention after Channel 5, I got drawn attention to a, 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 a half a dozen Twitter accounts, Facebook, blogs, and they were all run by the same people. Two or three, you can join them. Stephanie Hall. Now, anybody who doesn't know Stephanie Hall uh, married um, a convicted murderer, rapist, an old age pensioner, uh, Simon Hall, who claimed he had never done it. Now, I never looked at the case personally, so I don't know why she's got beef with me. 
Um, Simon Hall in jail, I think, 13 years. He, he claims he's innocent. He gets released by prison and he marries Stephanie Hall. And uh, I think two years in, he, he commits suicide. And Stephanie he, Hall he, then claims... Go on, please. He actually married her in prison. He was never released. He? he died in prison, ah. yeah. Right, and then he kills himself, right? Mm -hmm. And she claims he made a confession. So she's made, he's made a fool of her by telling her he, he's really an innocent man. And then years later, he tells her he... he he, he done what he did. Now, I don't know if it happened. It's done. Anyway. I've never really examined the case to pass it. All of a sudden, this woman's right. Somebody texted me yesterday 40, 40 blogs. For, no, 40. 40 blogs. Um, I'm sinister. I'm this. I'm a shallow. I'm a fraud. I've never been in a law society. They're all lies, but she need money for me, too. Well, well generally, I'm taking the court of law for no good. Now she's telling me, I gave you a special key in 2010. Oh, uh, you've got a special, you I, I've got a special key that I gave you to get in your law offices in Glasgow to allow you to access the, the, the case files. Now, anybody that doesn't know me, I've been open for the start of this. Sandaline gave me access to Luke Mitchell's case files. She delivered them in my flat in Upper Craig in Stirling on an old bus, if I remember, an old minibus type. And there was 31 boxes carrying them up three flights of stairs. I turned my office, my spare room into my office. So I never, I never gave back you access to Luke Mitchell papers. But there's but, 30 podcasts. I gave okay. you a magic key. But let's say, let, let's take all of that away and just say that it was true and that there was a special key and that you gave that special key to me to go into an office to take these case, case papers. What would be wrong with that, given what we know about the case now? Is it wrong to go against the rules in order to... Um, expose this level of wrongdoing. I don't know if it is against the rules, son. If, if Luke Mitchell gave me a mandate, yeah. and I was his lawyer, and, it, and then a mandate told me to, to give, give you access to his court papers, what's wrong with that? Exactly, there's, exactly. There's nothing any, anything wrong. The latest is, this is where it gets scary. Listen, there's 40 podcasts, I'm going to read that, and Jenny, I'm trying to look at the negatives. It's too yeah. much. If people draw your attention, Stephanie, right, Scott, you better look at this 40 podcast. I'm thinking, what? The latest podcast in my book, you'll see, I, I, I thanked a woman, Catherine Loudon for Canada, oh, yeah. right, for proofreading my, my book. Oh, she, brilliant. She's done it all pro bono. Now, her aunt, Catherine Loudon, there's a family, I'm from Kingston in Canada, is, is on my Twitter. Now, I don't think, I've never seen Catherine Loudon ever tweet ever in her life, but mm -hmm. she's, she's she, she follows me on Twitter. Yeah. She doesn't need to she doesn't need to But it's her aunt. It's not the person that edited this book. It's her aunt. Now, Stephanie Hall is now targeting her. She just happens to be the chief executive officer of a women's organisation. You know, like for um, victims, female victims, she runs a big centre, but she's chief, chief executive. So somebody like Stephanie Hall is not going to get any trouble. But she's now targeting a woman that she never met before in her life, doesn't know who she is, targeting her in her work. Talking about me, me and you with 30 boxes of evidence and how you gave me access to it, and how Catherine Loudon's involved in this case. You're nuts. Now, how do people, how are people going to come forward and speak? Yeah. That, that, and by the way, I'll tell you right for day one, I've done what I thought genuinely thought was right. Mm -hmm. I've still, Mark Kane's still never been cleared for this. You can go through this case a hundred times and there's always questions who did and who didn't they? And, and, and obviously number one suspect and not like Mark Kane's always been number two when you ever get an outside agency. Look at this, they always put Mark Kane with very personal interest. So I was doing right. I look at the attacks now we're asking people now to come forward and speak. Oh, I would think twice. Yeah. You know, you're yeah. attacking your friends in Canada, the right shut some of the stuff, genuinely, some of the stuff. Oh, they're written by that Stephanie Hall. And by the way, my opinion. It comes for deeper. That's Jane Hamilton and her talking and put, put in see this term and see that. Term. I, I don't know. I don't know. If, <coughs> excuse me. I don't know if they, <coughs> if they know each other. But well, they follow each other. It, it wouldn't surprise me because I have seen the same sorts of attacks. <coughs> excuse me. Over the years, um, about ten, maybe eleven years ago, there was threats to put pictures of my daughter and my home address and phone number on the internet just to try and basically shut me up now we're asking people to come forward we're asking people to to give us information with that sort of hate campaign going on 
Oh, you have this. to think, would, would I do it? Would I go forward and risk that? That my young grandson. I'm not going to tell you his name now because there's no far away from here. Yeah. He's in school. He's in school last week and his teacher reading that book. Right. He couldn't help. He couldn't help but tell the teacher. Listen, that's my granddad for that book. And then she's telling him what she thinks. And I told him you have to watch it. Yeah. He's in that area. Oh, mm -hmm. People are um, still got strong feelings. And they're, they're strong feelings on both sides. And I understand it. And uh, and I was telling him, so, see my family. I said, before I spoke out, I went to my daughter, Chloe, who was the, was the same age as Joe, Joe did. <coughs> I went to my wee sister, Lisa, because Lisa stayed in East Houses. Mm -hmm. right? My wee lassie stays in Dander Hall. My dad stays in that or did stay in Dander He had it right at the forefront. Yeah. Abuse. Now, I went and spoke to him first. My dad was a wee hard man, even if he had, oh, that's true. even if he had two says what to me, I just told you, job, right? And the uh, door. Grandson, and then they're in that area, and you have to think, yeah. you know, what comes next? Listen, I'll deal with it. I, I'll also tell you, I, I don't know who, but I've got very strong feelings. I know who the person is. A uh, couple of years ago, somebody called, uh, Who are you going to call? Go in touch. Mm -hmm. Every time I do a podcast or whatever, or tweets, or they, they come into the, the free. And genuinely, I thought this person has, has genuine concerns. But she asks questions. Right, and the reasonable question, I like that. Yeah. And then the last few while, she just turned nasty. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're going to publish your uh, your book reviews, how much money you made, and uh, that Sandra Lee will go bankrupt because <laughs> her book and all that. I just tell them, mind you, if Sandra <laughs> made a million pounds through her book, listen, that's her work. Please listen. But see, I believe this person who you're going to call, listen, she, she's non stop now, and uh, I believe she's a police officer. She's a member of Joe's family, and she's also a police officer at St. Leonard's. So the last correspondence I had with her, I said to her, this continues. I'm going to walk into St. Leonard's and we'll get a senior officer and we'll sit and have a chat. Mm -hmm. well, like She's telling people I've never been registered in the law. She's like, that's just lies. Me and you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. 2010, I'm going to tell them my business. Not any business, but it's just lies. And uh, I'm, I'll go to St. Leonard's police station and we'll have a meeting or I'll raise actions against them. Now, I didn't want to start being raising civil actions against people that, well, fuck, it, it, yeah. it not benefit anybody. And I, I like some of them to raise an action against me, and we'll all go to court and we'll take my book and, and we'll put you on the stand and I'll ask you, did you see this and did you do that? Listen, you can't yeah. tell me I'm a liar. And it's definitely not liable because I'm not telling lies about the people. No. I'm only telling, telling you what I've discovered as I researched it. I'm more yeah. like that. Yeah, it's it's an absolute minefield, and uh, it, I know myself from the the years of <sighs> nightmare that that it really is it, it, getting through it and just trying to ignore it and keep going is hard enough in itself. But I wanted to come back to something that we touched on yeah. last time, and this is the get this is back to the key stuff. Um, the the guy in the red sweatshirt that ran like a bat out of hell out in front of a car, nearly got run over. So mm -hmm. I don't think we we explained properly like where he fits into all of this. So this is only my thinking. Only my way of thinking. You, you, you think of the crime scene. Think think of your Jody was found and, and draw a circle. Yeah. Right? Now in that circle mm -hmm. you have Jody Jones, who's positively identified on East, East House's Road, right? Yep. He's also getting followed by with a stocky man. Everyone now agrees, or even, the, uh, even the commission, I think, now agree to who the stocky man was, yeah? right? Mm -hmm. So we've got Jody and the stocky man <clears throat> mm -hmm. here at the top of the circle. At the bottom yep. of the circle, we have two men on a moped, positively identified, who are meant to be there. So... Mm -hmm. Four people in that small circle. It's not a massive circle. People are thinking, we'd run six a mile. It's, it's, it's a small circle. So you've got four people that we know were there. Four people. Yep. Two, may, two men leave the moped, leave on the moped, but we don't, don't know what two left the moped. We yep. only know two left, and we know Jody's lying dead. Picture. And you've got another man running away, so that makes four people. Mm. Well, common sense tells you, I'm not saying that definitely this man's running away is part of the gang, but... There's four people there, and we can only account for three. One's dead, two's left on an open. Where did the fourth person go? Yeah. Now, I've, I've always, only my opinion, I don't believe Ferris and Dickie left on that moped that day. I think the killer 
and Dickie left or, or, or the Colin Ferris and maybe the third person running back to hell was was the person that wasn't on the moped. Mm -hmm. but, but there was never now that's only my assumption. I'm not the base of sort of common sense. The, the, the runner is running towards um old farm, sorry. Old farm, is it? Home farm. Home farm garages. Where there's yep. a big night farm. Everyone in the four, very, very um Comfortable at the garages for frequent visitors, the users, gang huts, the fixed cars, all that, including Jody, by the way. Luke's brother, I don't know about Luke, but the rest. So, they are, somebody seen running in that direction. Then, from Home Farm, you can walk right up to Dickies. Mm -hmm. Go right through a field and go right to redrive that Dickies never be seen. And then that could be Ferris going back and he never left on the moped, or it could have been the fourth man, or it could have been some, somebody run across or run away from where Jody was killed. And that person was never chased. Yeah. Yeah, because one of the things we were talking about this earlier is one of the things about Stocky Man is mm -hmm. he was seen and he was identified walking down the <clears throat> East Houses Road behind Jody, mm -hmm. but he wasn't seen like on the East Houses Road once you've passed the turn into the entrance to the path. He yeah. wasn't seen on any other part of that road. Now we know there was a concert in the school that night. We know there were people coming and going. And nobody mentioned seeing this stocky man anywhere after the turn off to the path. Also, when, he, so, when he was uh, when he was seen on East Tuesday Road, he the only one place he went, he went down the wee path where Andrea Bryson allegedly drove well, past and seen, seen a couple. That's the path that he took. In, in terms of the investigation, if, if they're just looking at the, the, the actual information they've got, there's a man coming down this road. And there's mm -hmm. a bend in the road and there's an entrance to the path where a 14-year-old girl is believed to have gone and been found dead. And this man is never spotted at any point past that. Logic would suggest they would he go, the path. ah, he must have gone that way because nobody else saw him. But we know there was never any attempt to find him, really. Listen, there's, two, there's two big things in this. See, when you come off the East, Tosh East House Road and you go down the lane where Angina Bryson says she's allegedly seen Luke, right? Yeah. Once you go down there, everybody thinks you have to go out your own dyke path and then over the way to... Nonsense. The first break, and it was massive. It's the biggest... The, 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 the path less travelled, if, travel, if you like, his own dyke path. This is a well-travelled path. Once you go on the break in the wall, you can go down to the golf course. And you can yep. go to Woodburn. You can go to a swing park. You can take a left. We're the group, the wee boy in the group, right? You, you can take yeah. this road to where Jody's found, but you can walk into the open field. Yeah. Now, that's the most common route. I've been there a hundred times, and, and people face to see in that field daily, walking their dog. Um, if you're going to look Mitchell's for Jody Jones, you go over the open field, and you're going through New Battle Abbey, or you're going through the tool hire. So logic tells you that's the path you took. But the thing that, see what he mentions talking about, John Ferris, <coughs> who lives, the Alice Walker, who's the person who went right to where Jody was found, it's how it directed the traffic. People can say what they want. Well, you're yeah. upset. The Jones family, I do apologise. I'm only here to help you. Um, <clears throat> and then it's my job to upset people. I, I'm not apologising for that. There's a... John Ferris was cut his hair because he didn't want to look like the stocky man. The stocky man had never been mentioned. Yeah. How did he know that the stocky man may, may be brought into the fold? Because the stocky man had never been brought into the fray. Before he was brought into the field, John Ferris is actually openly saying, I cut my hair because I didn't want to be um, mistaken for the stocky man, or I didn't want to be wrong there too. But he brings the stocky man to, 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 to the investigation. No a sight, and John Ferris brings him. So John Ferris doesn't want to look like the stocky man. Why? Why? Well, how, did he, how did he know? How did well, he know there was a stocky man? Well, it, was, it was the 16th, I think, <clears throat> of July that the police first put out the appeal for, for anybody that had seen the stocky man. We we know, uh -huh. we know now from the case papers that the police had to have known before that because one of the witnesses <coughs> went back to the police and said he thought he'd seen stocky man again at the reconstruction. So we know the police knew before the reconstruction, which was on the 7th. But if Ferris was, was saying that he'd, he'd cut his hair because he didn't want to be mistaken for stocky man, well, how did he know? Uh, he knew about the stocky man before anyone else knew about the stocky man. Why? Because mm. the stocky man was here. So, so and common sense. Common sense in this whole thing tells you four people were at that site. Yeah, there may have been more. 
I was thinking he could have been the man in the red stretcher, but I can never ever remember him in a red stretcher. Ever, yeah. ever. I, I don't think the build <coughs> me, I don't think the build would match. Excuse me, I'm gonna to have to have a drink. Ah. <laughs> so so you vote four people, one's dead, two have left in a moped, this is the fourth. Yeah. So you've got somebody running, frightened. Um uh, only try to go out and buy more and sort of experiences in life. When you're yeah. running away from crime or fear or or whatever, you have no disregard for the road. And this person had no disregard. They run right across across the road, nearly get themselves run over. Yeah, straight then, in front of a car. Yes, in front of cars over a busy road. People are maybe thinking it's a wee country road. We that road, road is quite a busy road. 16, 15, 16 mile an hour cars, and, and this boy's running right straight across. Especially now, at that time of night, because there's a lot yes. of people coming home for work and everything at that time of night. Some, never um, some. Yeah, and and again, you know, if the police. Right, let me let me word this properly. So, Stocky Man was known to at least John Ferris within the first couple of days. Now, yes. either that's something that John Ferris knew and hadn't told the police, or it was something the police knew and had already told the family, and that's how Ferris found out about it. One, now, of, the, if, one of the two. Yeah, if it was the police that knew about Stocky Man, why was he not right at the top of their investigation from the beginning? Because yeah. we've got this story that Luke left at tea time. Sandra, you, 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 you used a word. That you, sorry, I'm trying to be polite. You, you used a word, investigation. There was no investigation in the crime. Yeah, yeah. It's, but, it's, it's, it's sort of nonsense. <clears throat> Listen, I've been part of it 40 years. I'm an expert witness. You can class me. I, I could go into court, high court. In criminal trials, and be classed as an expert witness by QCs who bring me in and say, "Mr. Fogg, your experiences are this. Tell me what you think." Now, I'm an expert witness. Pathologists are expert witnesses in pathology. I'm an expert witness in crime because of my experience, my education. And uh, there was no investigation. Started doing dozens and dozens. There's no investigation. Yeah, it's it, it targeting one person because you think genuinely probably thought. If, if, when you think about. He looks a bit strange. He's arguing with mum. The police are telling him, oh, he left at five o'clock with his girlfriend. Now he's finding his body. Find their body. He tells you he's been there in that period of time. Something's went wrong. And they just... Yeah, but that's that's my point, Scott. That's my point. If that was, if that was what they believed, mm -hmm. but then we find out that they knew that there was a stocky man following her at five o'clock. Not Luke, because we know Luke wasn't stocky. Who... Yeah. Where in the where in the lack of investigation did that fall through the cracks? So we've got these officers that think Luke left her at tea time. We've got information from the very beginning that a, a stocky man was following behind her. What was it? What was the officer's name that went to um, America with what, Dobby? Is it Walker? Tom Martin. Tom Martin. Tom Martin sees when he sees his stocky man. Oh, brother. Oh. This is fantastic because he he's outside Luke. He's a detective and he's thought, oh, what a stocky man! I've got a positive side with Jody. It's not Luke, and he's he's been reined in. Mm -hmm. You think? Only my opinion. He got reined in. His superior officer, his obviously, nah, 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 that's no that's no fit what I'm thinking. He done it. Luke Mitchell done it. They've never invested. <clears throat> so John Ferris is a petty criminal. Call him what you want, but a petty criminal. And, uh, his whole evidence, every statement I've ever read from John Ferris, and they're only interested in the What kind of knife did he carry? How much yeah. hash did he sell? He's 21 and this boy's 14. They were no yeah. same class because I'm a big class warrior and all that. Luke Mitchell's got a wee nice family in a middle class, whatever, suburb. John Ferris is petty criminal. His mum and him get up to crimes and all that together. And all they're interested in is Luke Mitchell. They never asked him Ferris why he cut his hair. What does he do with the moped, son? Hey, why was your mum and sister burning clothes? Listen, we've got half a dozen names for this, so I'm quite happy yeah. to say this in yeah. mine, right? Um, John Ferris, his mother was burning clothes on the night that Jody Jones was murdered. And her mother was walking, um, Yvonne Walker. Now, I'm saying that online. I'm like, Please take, take me for Bring me up for live. I'll we'll pull up your report. They were burning clothes. I've got several named people from Mayfield who've seen this happen. Yeah. They reported to the police, and the police is. 
think it's here. Yeah. If I remember right, in, in the file, it says um, in the wrong area. The yeah. fire was in the wrong area. It's a couple of hundred yards from where he Vaughan Walker, Alice Walker. Eh? It's a gang up where Jody goes, Janine goes, um, Ferris goes, Nicky goes, Joseph Jones goes. They all go in this house for a gang hut. It's a smoke, ash, smoke in and water yeah. of the gut. So a hundred, couple of hundred yards away from his home, people involved in the murder, when the moped, the murder goes and the police just disregarded it. Well, I think it's interesting. In the uh, early well, days, when, when the calls were going out for anybody, <coughs> excuse me, that might have seen Jody, and the first four days, it was pictures of Jody aged five or eight. There was two two separate little girl pictures. But what I find interesting looking back now is that they were only asking for um, anybody who'd seen Jody, sorry, in the the new battle or going towards the new battle area. They never asked about anybody seeing Jody going from East Houses up the way towards Mayfield. But that's where, uh, that's where Yvonne Walker lived. And that's where the fire was. So if nobody's see, looking in that direction and the oh, police are no. telling people not to no. look in that direction, then it's no. easy to dismiss anything in that direction. Uh, as listen, as yeah, I don't want them. Yes. Listen, yeah. listen, Mayfield, Mayfield, everybody's here. I know Jody stays in East Houston, and sister stays in Mayfield, so does the granny and the cousins. Uh, the, the, the Yvonne Walker's is a gang hut. I'm not condemning the woman here, but it's a gang hut. At that time, they were all 19, 18, 19, 20 for Mayfield. We're all just more harsh drinking. They were all hooked. They were asked for everyone involved in this case. It's a gang hut. So a couple of hundred yards from there, people close to the moped boys are burning clothes. Why? Listen, a criminal tells you you get rid of the vehicle first. Yeah. Normally, if you're burning cars, you leave it. Close inside the car and you use accelerants and you blow the car up. And some people are in the jail because a zip yeah. don't find the DNA thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And here we have an, a, a, a woman burning a, a parker coat in a tiny wee fire like this, and they never left any trace. When the fire, when the parker was burning, there's no embryos or whatever in, in the, the flowers or the trees, nothing. But there yeah. we've got another couple burning clothes, <laughs> burning clothes. Yeah. And the police didn't even pay attention. It's just the I think what was interesting about <coughs> that fire as well is there was mention of some sort of cable. Baby clothes. Uh, there was oh, baby clothes, yeah. Baby some, clothes, sort, yes. some sort of cable in in the fire. Now, why why they noted that and then decided they weren't going to investigate it anyway is, is beyond me. But if you remember, the pathologist said that at some point Jody had been strangled, at least unconscious, and he couldn't tell whether she'd been strangled uh, manually with hands or uh, with yeah, ligature. Uh, yeah. And then they find a fire uh, with cables in it, and they still don't. They still don't listen, investigate. Listen, they did. They did. The list. The list that you could put up. Just forget everything. Just yeah. a list. Everything that was brought to their attention. They should have been investigating one condo. Mark Cain. Yeah. There yeah, is Nicky, the stocky, the bump moped, the cutting of the hair. Oh, listen, and, but forget what they've done at the crime scene. Just look at what they ignored. Yeah. That yeah. tells me they, they, they knew from day one that's the man, that's the colour. And then they thought they had the open and shut case. Yeah. Comes yeah. back on the 16th and says there's no um, forensic links. Oh, they, 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 they in the panic. What now? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what, it's impossible, Sandra. Yeah. Listen to that. I, I, I took, I, I, I touched on in my book, but I don't go into detail, but I'll tell you. I took people in a new battle woods. Mm -hmm. Very serious, dangerous criminals that I've represented. Very serious men that are very, oh, yeah. listen, criminal. When I show them, no chance. No chance. No. They look at you like you're stupid. How yeah. can you physically beat somebody in, hold them and strangle them and, and, then, and then chop them up, and cut them up, strip them naked and not leave a trace? It's, it's impossible. Think. See, when you sit back and you, you, it's too easy to get involved in the case, you know that yourself. Right? Yeah, yeah. When you're not involved and you just sit back and you read the facts, how can that be? How can that happen? It's impossible. Now, they made it possible because he's a beast. Yeah, this wee 14 year old beast allegedly could fly through the air and, and then kill people without leaving traces. Now. But by the time the newspapers were finished with Luke Mitchell, they wouldn't have cared what evidence. You could have had yeah. fingerprints there, the stocky man on her face, and have cared, ah, that's that. You're using excuses to protect the beast. Yeah, they'd have found, 100%. Yeah, 
they defend an innocent, expl an innocent saying, explanation. Innocent. But, spare, spare more no t-shirt. Innocent. Come on. Come well, on. yeah. The, the <laughs> other thing, the other innocent explanation is the one that they came up with about um, the the murderer wouldn't necessarily have been bloodstained because Jodie was facing the wall and he was behind her. I mean... But that's, right. that's for the injuries. Yeah, but let, let's... Listen. Let's say that's possible, right? Which mm -hmm. is not, but let's just say it is possible. No, so no. at that point, the blood goes forward. But now he's got to take her and move her and strip her clothes off and inflict the post-mortem injuries and still not get no, a bit of DNA on him. We've spoken about this before, we didn't want to bring injuries in, which is true, so I agree with you. There's one injury. It's all alarm, a defensive, the people yes. doing this are defensive, but I'm no, I'm totally convinced of that, however. It's defensive, he would be saturated in blood by that one wound. Yes, absolutely. Facing this, being being this, what about well, this, when you're facing it, listen. Well, I mean, you've seen that wound. I've yes. seen machete wound, and this is as good, there's no right word, this is as deep and as dangerous a cut as I've seen yes. many machetes and they've done that and they're saturating the blood because it, it, like in the shooting series it would weaken so the blood coming for that would cover it an attacker he then has to tie yeah. her up and strip her and, and, and they're not a trace he's pulled her hair he's punched her he's battered her she's fought for her life come on the shooting series he fought for her life he's not he, Mitchell no good scratches they, they strip him he's, he, his nails are dirty his hair's dirty his wrist dirty his ankles are dirty so he's not washed See if, him, if he's covered in pet or something and somebody had scraped his nails, you would see that he's cleaned up. Yeah. There isn't any cleanup here. It's no. just a new boy. There, there's another side to this um, as well that we don't often get the chance to touch on. And I, I think maybe, maybe it would be good if we could more often. Mm. They took Luke straight to the station that night. Now, we've seen mm. what he saw that night. We've, mm. we've oh, seen I, I know. Oh. This yeah, is a 14... Well, 14 year old yeah. kid and they take him to the station they strip him naked they take swabs and blood and get a, a doctor to examine him take pictures of his body and then they hold him there till seven o'clock the following morning not once not once is he asked how he is they bring in a doctor to examine him for evidence but yeah. no doctor or psychologist to examine yeah. him for trauma luke mitchell was a child Mm -hmm. Society betrayed Luke Mitchell. Absolutely. Mitchell never got any um, rights. He got no human no. rights. He got no no rights to a fair trial. He no. got no rights to a child. We were talking about this last week. Yeah. An advocate who says I'm opening for their holiday, a solicitor advocate who's now writing pieces on child protection mm -hmm. while in custody. Luke Mitchell got nothing. Luke Mitchell yeah. was killed 14 years of age, struck naked, never been in a police station in his life. The thing that always gets me with this, uh, apart from Luke getting Railroad, use the word interrogated, they, they accepted the word interrogation now in the Scottish Criminal Case Review Commission. If I was a Palestinian kid, right, or a, or, a, or some other kid that's in a foreign country, there were politicians be up in arms, that boy's never got his rights as a, a child. They just yeah. walked past me with my child. Yeah. Now, the thing that gets me, right, they, 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 they've done proper with Luke Mitchell, that's one If I was a proper, I would have done the same, by the way. I would have stripped him mm -hmm. naked and filmed him and all that because it's a new girl in, you need that, right? Other people over over that wall, they were getting driven about Dal Keith. Yeah. Oh, this walker was in the police station. <laughs> I'm stupid, I shouldn't have laughed, but it's peaceful and cop stuff. Well, they've, they've got a person who, who's DNA contaminated. You can't mm -hmm. even cuddle blood his body without a transfer of some kind. Without some kind, yeah. anybody with any kind of knowledge of DNA knows that. You cradle the body so you're covered in blood and DNA. She's in a police station. And instead of saying, Alice, give us your clothes and you're in a white suit, the driver doing it to your number one suspect who's talking man's house. Ah, yeah. Even if you find blood and, and guts and, and, and the talking man's house, you've now got a reason for it because so Alice Walker said and she's cuddled the body. So she's taken the, contaminated that house. And allowed that it come and contaminate herself. Kelly and Janine go home. They, they, well, and then... she, she said, she said when when she came back over the wall when everybody was screaming and everything that she and Janine were hugging each other. 
So there you've got transfer. Okay, I totally understand that. I'm not saying that shouldn't happen. But after that point, they should have taken their clothes and they would have been able to say, right, that's contamination from that. But instead, they let them go and mingle with other people who were yeah. in the county. The phone stands on the phones. Every one of them on that search party, every phone should have been taken off them immediately. Yes. What they done to Luke Mitchell? Grab that phone very secure it because every, every phone call has been made, therefore it could be important. He's four people. They didn't know you touched on this. I'm not 100% sure they didn't know or they didn't know or who told them. They they thought Luke left Jody's home at five o'clock with Jody, mm -hmm. right? That was wrong. Now, yeah. who told the police that? That never ever questioned, it's never been asked. But the police tell people. So they left her home uh, with her boyfriend after a fight. If I remember right, at me personally, she left the, her house with her brother after the fight. And, and somebody says that the, the boyfriend and they've just turned everything into the Mitchells. Or yeah. he left. So do you believe Luke Mitchell left the home at five? He then finds her at say, 11 o'clock at night and she's been rude to him. He claims he's no seen her after he left her house and, and they all know that's lies. Wasn't it lies? It was the truth. So they just make him suspect. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was just going to pick up on something you said there. Um, you said like you would have taken his phone and secured it. Well, yes. they took his phone, but they didn't secure it. And we know that now because the, the cop <clears> took <throat> the phone, switched it off, put it in his pocket, took it back out of his pocket, switched it back on again to phone Corrine. And yes. then somewhere in this process, a text gets sent and messages get deleted oh. after the police have got police. the phone. So somebody asked me about that today and said, would that not be tampering with the evidence? Well, Just only, in confidence. <laughs> exactly. Only if it was deliberate. Um, if it was just sheer stupidity, which it clearly was. Right, better take his phone. It's a bit like Scott said when they took him to the station and they started taking his clothes and putting them in a bag. And one of them says to the other, should we not be wearing gloves for this? So they take the stuff back out of the bag, put their gloves on, and then start putting stuff back in the bag. I mean, uh, you, think, actually... think, think of the phones. There's, oh, I may not get to say a number because folk could be, oh, there was only six and no ten or whatever. But there's numerous phones, numerous phones. They're all, the nobody knows if the SIM card to Jody or the phone registered. They're all registered to each other. Everybody's using everybody's yeah, yeah. phone. They're all half cousins. I'm not fragging you. I'm just telling you how it is. Now, yep. at least then put them in the wrong <laughs> label. <laughs> So they put a phone that belongs to Jody, Joseph and Joseph's phone, do it to Janine or whatever. It's all just a bundle of nonsense. Yeah. And through memory, weeks later, he put some in the right bags. Yeah. Come on. Nobody knows who was but, using what phone or what SIM card. I, I ah, think I you listen. remember the nightmare of when I was trying to work out the phones for, for my book. And it, ah, it was that, weeks. It I gave up. Just, it, I gave it up. It was just I, a mind. I, Oh, I, I gave up and just gave a, a, a reasonable explanation. This is what happened because yeah. too much, and, kind of too much. But when I had, you know, I'm not in the middle of a police investigation. I'm sitting at home with all the stuff in front of me, trying to work it out. This cop who's in the middle of the investigation, from memory, goes, "Oh yeah, I remember which phone goes uh, there now." Not a chance. Not a chance. But I'm going to tell you again that word investigation. I, yeah. I spoke to a girl recently, I'm not going to say her name, I'm going to take down her social. She was one of Luke's pals through school. Mm -hmm. And uh, since, 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 she's uh, sought counselling on numerous occasions because yeah. she's that messed up. Because she, her words, no my words. The police bullied her and put words in her mouth. Yeah. And, uh, and she says, you know, Scott, I was that convinced that Luke had done it. She says, but you're my pal at school and I, I couldn't believe he'd done it. And at the time they were finished with me. Now, yeah. this is only one person, that's what half a dozen like that. And, uh, there have been many that have uh, I mean, There wasn't an investigation. Oh, there wasn't no. an investigation into the no. murder of Jody's own. But I'll tell you straight, <coughs> I'm no Luke's fan, I'm no part of any group. I've never heard being, you know, that. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. too uncomfortable with it for me, you know. My, my only involvement in this case began with, with Jody Jones. Mm -hmm. As a wee girl. I, I, I never come here to um, save Luke Mitchell or now. <laughs> Luke Mitchell with my client and, and I'm ah, you know my client ah, here's my client and if people oh, want to debate yeah. that ah, I'll debate that we'll get wriggling let, written letters later um, my only only concern in this now is Luke Mitchell yeah well that sounds a wee bit um, I'm doing my job and people say oh you're upset this one I'm not caring 
that's the truth. I'm not here. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not here to um, pander to these people. I'm here to try and uh, get a wee lad, a wee boy free from prison for a crime. He's in prison think, for a crime he did not commit. Yeah, I think the question has to be, if you're upset by people telling the truth, then you might want to go and reconsider your values about why that upsets you. If it's the truth, why would it upset you? So that brings us, we're going to run out of time again tonight, Scott. Oh, no. that, brings, that brings us to where now and why. So where, where does this case go next and why does it go in that direction and not that direction? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, my thoughts here, media, the, the media convicted Luke Mitchell, we need the media on site. The, yeah. the, the more people listen uh, and uh, it's very difficult. You go on a podcast and people get a hundred emails and messages, what are you talking to him for? All oh, that, but we need the media. First and yeah. foremost, we need media on site, right? <clears throat> then Luke's group, yourself and others included, I says, oh, no, I'm not getting anybody here. I'm just saying sometimes you have to look at things and change tactics. The tactics yeah. that have been used in the, in the past have not done anything. They're, they're, they're no. Every time people started peacefully, I'm no exciting. Come on, <laughs> right. just right. see it. <laughs> Get to the Crown Office. Get to the Crown Office. Get to the um, judiciary. Vig vigils. Right? Silent vigils outside candle. Like, be peaceful. I'm no encouraging any, any disorder. Because they'll, they'll come for me and then say, but they, they have to change tactics. Luke, Luke himself and his group have to start fighting a different fight. No telling them to climb roofs, and they, but they have to be active. I don't mean writing letters to people because somebody got 100 letters, puts somebody off, right? Yeah. 100 emails and all that, it puts people off, right? They have to do vigils, you know, protests, and whatever, to, to raise your attention and get the media involved. What, the other thing, the things, sorry, go on. DNA. One of the things I suggested was, um, some people were saying, like, if we all bombard this office or that office with emails. Well, I know from experience, they just put a search thing on it uh, and it, it just sure. deletes all of them. So yes. maybe since we all have our own MSP yes. and they work for us and mm -hmm. they have surgeries where you can go along and speak to them, maybe people start to need, need to start making an appointment with their MP yes, yes. and taking the information you. to them. So yeah, it's much more difficult sitting <clears throat> eye to eye with somebody across the table mm -hmm. to just go, I'm mm -hmm. not listening to you. So so maybe if people started to, to approach their MPs, it, it's, it would be a slow process. It's not a great, you know, yeah. but That's better true. than firing all these emails in and, and then people just getting their emails deleted. Legally, yeah. we, we were speaking earlier, this is only my opinion. I, I think the, the medical records of this document are fresh evidence. Now, mm -hmm. you know there's an argument to this. They were it's, available at the time, of, allegedly available at the time of trial, so there's no fresh evidence. However, they have never been put before a jury. Never. Yeah. Yeah. A reasonable person, the test for everything is reasonable. Yeah. Is it a reasonable suggestion that if the jury knew about this document, his medical condition, Five weeks previously, how the, how the medicine was wearing off, and we smoking cannabis as me. Lord, see when I first started studying this, and a man called Bo Stewart, I'm looking for his book, he's now dead, the late Bo Stewart. He says to me, Scott, find the judge, find what the judge says in this case, and then what from there. You always go to judge's charge, right? Okay, I'll get yeah. the judge's charge. And, and, and he described Luke Mitchell, I have no doubt in my mind, uh, smoking cannabis, resin less to the psychosis that led to the murder of Jody. Jody, he was describing her brother. He was yeah. describing, he wasn't describing Luke Mitchell. He now, him. So to they, me, that's my nice evidence. Yeah, there's there's a question that I know people will ask. So mm -hmm. the judge, the judge got that wrong, right? Because there was no evidence that Luke had None. ever suffered any medical. None. Mental we'll condition. Play the, we'll play the evidence that the stocky man did suffer. So, but and we've got hard evidence. Of what, what in the most smith could describe is the stocky man. To me, that's what, fresh evidence. What people will ask after this is, well, can't we go back to appeal on the basis that the judge said about you know the the effects of the cannabis and yada 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 and. I, I think the answer, correct me if I'm wrong, I think the answer to that is no, we can't because we 
had it had it been to be taken back, it would have been to be taken back at the appeal in two thousand and eight. So, so we can't use it now. I, th I think yeah. that's the argument. I, I, I de definitely l l listen. And I'll argue it was available at the time of trial. Yeah, his lawyers never read the medical records. Me personally, if you put the medical records to a jury, it's a re re reasonable assumption that uh, they would, it would create a reasonable doubt. Yeah, yeah. You read and, the uh, re and, uh, medical records in the stocky man. Oh, that would create a reasonable doubt. Whether well, he was able to give evidence himself or whether a doctor could have gave evidence. Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. A I think the, suspect. Right. I think the the test there would is would that evidence had that evidence been before the jury, um. <clears throat> would it ha have a, a significant possibility of returning a different verdict? I think that's, oh, definitely. that's definitely. what it has I, to I, do. Believe so. I believe so. Mm -hmm. The second way is we were talking DNA. And yes. I'm not a DNA expert. I'm decent. I listen to people. Um, D DNA um, has progressed massively since 2003. Yes. Well, it used to be, I, I, I'll make a floor myself. 10 bars to 20 bars in examination and now can pinpoint. Now, mm -hmm. we have experts, I'm not naming them, I don't even want 50 emails going to the office they want, right, telling me their love lives of what happened 20 years ago. So like, That's <laughs> we, we, we have experts in this case, DNA forensic experts, who say if we can have a look at the samples that yeah. the Crown hold, we now can give you a definitive answer who killed Jody. Yes. Now, Everybody says, you're just going to get the DNA. Oh, come on. <laughs> you go to the high court, yeah. they, chase you, they tell you, piss off, that you're on a, a fishing exhibition. And, yeah. and, and the case, case is closed, you're not getting... You only want to access samples. Like the phone, they're the size of my book, you know, like pass them over to the yeah. decent people and let the decent people re-examine them. Mm -hmm. and it's virtually impossible. People say, just go and grab it. Oh, listen, uh, listen, me, no. You go in the appeal court five, six times, and that's when eventually you may get them. Mm -hmm. Now, you may get them. And, and I'm hoping this time there's a possibility. Hey, listen, the media must be a part. I think if you go to the high court or the appeal court now and say, we want to look at these samples, and, they, and, and we've got a couple of experts who are willing to write from none of the reports saying why they want to check these samples. Now, if, if the, these preliminary reports are strong enough, an argument, well, why not? Yeah. Well, that, that's that's the question, in fact. Why not? If there's nothing to hide, if they are absolutely oh. convinced they got the right person, what yeah. harm would it do yes. to hand over all the samples and say, go on, test them, you're going to find out we're right? Well, listen, you, you know the what argument. Some, somebody says, uh, they, they might say it's Luke. If it's Luke, I'm, I'm not. I'm, Game I'm, over. I would take, take what criticism come away and say, listen, I've got this wrong. Absolutely. I, I, I know it never happened, so I'm quite comfortable. Well, well I, think, I think it's interesting it's for people goes. to realise that ah. one of the people pushing most strongly for these samples to be released and retested is Luke himself. You know, ah, He's saying, you know. get them all, test them all, use the most up-to-date testing you've got. <clears throat> and we know, we know, we, listen, we knew, between us, that's nearly 40 years we've been on this case. Mm -hmm. That's a long, long time. Yeah. Luke Mitchell knows he was in that field. He was not yeah. in the wall. He wasn't there. Yeah. He wasn't there. The I think... was there and a, and a couple of other people, and then a couple of other people disappeared with the help of the police. Yeah. And I, I think the, the fact that he's been so upfront for all these years. Uh, sorry, here's somebody saying, I'm in for the protest. Now, <laughs> just, just to, to reiterate what Scott was saying. Any sort of protest or vigil or anything like that, there are a number of things that people have to be aware of so that it's helpful to Luke's case and not detrimental. And the first is absolutely peaceful. I'm not suggesting any anybody in the group would do anything other than that. But there will be agitators. So the first thing is absolutely peaceful. Oh, have we frozen? Oh, no. There we are. Um, so that's first thing, absolutely peaceful. The second thing is um, there are certain places where you don't have to get permission, but it's worth letting the authorities know you're going to be having a protest. Um, if anybody's got issues with that, come back to me and I'll try and point people in the right direction. But, you know, simple things. I know some of the group are now back out with their posters and their stickers and 
the going around. And uh, yeah, a silent protest. Yeah, yeah, we oh, had a silent protest a, many years ago. Peaceful. Can I, can I tell you, see, Sandra, we spoke, touched on the cell, I seen a graffiti at the Vienna Wall. Yes. That, t- listen to me, that was terrible. And, and I'll tell you what, I'm not convinced that Luke's supporters did that because never done look any good. No. The, the, listen, I, I will always work on mistrust. Yes. Yeah. Right, the life of there and legal stuff and, and mistrust everything. As soon as I seen that, I thought that was somebody who tried to harm me. Yeah. So, uh, that, that, that's what I took. It, it got a wee headline in whatever paper. I've seen reporters act worse, much worse than that. And, uh, but whoever done that, I wouldn't be doing Luke Mitchell any favours. <laughs> so it's entirely yeah. possible that it was actually done in, a, in an attempt to make Luke supporters look bad. But if it I was, that. If, yeah. if that's why it was done, and if, if somebody decided to do it for that reason, um, got some bad news for them because one of the newspapers, I think, Oh, presented. Oh, ah, the first time in yeah. 17 years. So I'm pointing the finger. Out. Yeah, first yeah. time in 17 years I've seen a, a journalist, a tabloid journalist, be denied. You know, like be both sides. The first yeah. time I thought, oh yeah, that is it time that, coming? Yeah, that journalist actually said he spoke to people and said, you know, there, there's a large group locally now think. Yes. So, you know, I, I am not yeah. advocating graffiti. Please, I'm not advocating graffiti. What I'm saying is, if people did that to discredit Luke supporters, and we don't know if that's the case, but if they did, it backfired. Yeah, because at least one reporter said, hang on, let's go and speak to people and ask them how yeah. they feel about this, and then reported it. So, yeah. Um, Pe- peaceful we- protest. And journalists, they must, they must somehow get media on site. Media yeah. convicted, right? They made them into yes. a monster. It's now, it's now the media's chance to maybe rectify all this and ask, did we get it wrong? Yeah. James Matthews and his, right, and um, I'm not even going to mention them in the record. But these people have to sit back and think, did we get this wrong? And and yeah. if they say Mitchell is maybe up in this, and then you can start building. The yeah. pressure then can be put on politicians. I, I would, I would say to them, I would say to anybody, and I always have, there is no shame in saying, I made a mistake, I got it wrong. There's no shame in it. And people oh, have a lot more respect for oh, journalists who, who came forward and said, I'm, I'm having a look at this again, because now I'm no longer convinced. There is, there is a lot of people who that, but some people have got careers to protect in years and yeah. years of lives. And if you feed somebody the lie for 20 years, it's very yeah. difficult. So, yeah. The other night, there, I, I, everybody has to make mistakes, and this, this case is seventeen years old, twenty years 19, old. Nineteen. Right? I, I the last season the day there are Sandra Lee brought um, thirty box, thirty plus boxes to me. And I think I think two seven. You think maybe two nine? Yeah. Maybe it was two eight. <laughs> is there any significance to somebody making some I mean, mis- no mistake. It's twenty years you're going back in over a minute. Yeah. yeah. We, then, we could we could probably go back through records and pinpoint the actual date. But do we have to when there's so much more that we could be doing? Well, oh, my pal, was her, Miss Hall? Oh, she's, she, she's got pictures up to two, when I was 2005. <laughs> well, that's 18 years ago. I look, I look like a child. I look like a wee I, I can't And then, oh, he sees her staying and she sees her. Oh, listen, I, 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 I gave an affidavit. In 2005, yeah, yeah, Robbie Burnett, a uh, solicitor advocate, and I gave it to Robbie Burnett because Robbie Burnett's got a very, uh, a decent reputation of being an honest man. As solicitors go, he's a, you know, a guy who meets you in the pub and takes lines of coke and backhand, there's money that, but yeah. he was a straightforward solicitor, right? Solicitor advocate, and very well respected. I went to Robbie Burnett, and, and my affidavit's still sitting there 17 years later. So yeah. people are asking, oh, where's he been for 17 years? Where have you been for? <laughs> exactly. They've wrote, ah, they've, wrote, they've, they've, they've wrote a couple of letters to Luke and seen them on a couple of pictures. And I'm um, Luke's fan club. I wrote an affidavit in 2005 and, and I've been attacked ever since. Yeah, now, yeah. You've got a copy of my affidavit. My affidavit I do indeed, yeah. was a phone affidavit uh-huh. and I stand by every word I say in 2005. Yeah, yeah. Every word, well, unless I may have 
a couple of dates wrong, but I stand by her during that season 2005. Yeah, yeah. On that note, Scott, we're going to have to call it again. That's us out of time. Lara, you're welcome. But thank you again. That was that was once again amazing. And uh, I think we're going to have Listen. some updates over the next couple of weeks. So, um, Lara, you're welcome. To... All right, Scott. All right, bro. I'm not asking. I'm sorry, Lady. I'm sorry, Lady. Did you tell me shocking? I asked. Oh, I tell you, I'm asking. Robert G. Stocky man. Robert, who's Robert G. I can't even see it, Robert yeah, G. Well, I like it. Robert All right, G Scott. was talking. All right, go on. Go on. Good night. Cheers, Sandra. Enjoy the end. Rest easy. Right, thank you. All. Enjoy the night. Thank you, pal. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.